Okay. We are officially live. Welcome to Vino and Vend. Happy Sunday. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ooh, that was so loud. Oh, well. Um, hi, guys. I'm burning up. Is it hot? No. We just have the stove on, and so I think that's what it is. I think I'm just hot from the stove. Um, okay, so welcome to our second official Vino Invent of the year. That's what I'm calling it. So what has everybody been up to? We, um, well, let's say hey to everybody and then we'll jump into it. Yes, okay, so hello Sapna and Joe and Thomas and Devante and Lane and Errol and Chris and Kyle and Jim, Tony, um, Glenn the Gay Guy, Sean, Clinton, Nathan, Derek, Frank, Will, Billy, Rebecca. Hello guys, so why don't we do the official cheers so whether you are drinking Chardonnay, Cabernet, tea, Coke, Pepsi, we have a favorite. We're not going to tell you which one it is. Sprite, water, chamomile tea. <clears throat> Happy St. Patrick's Day, guys. Patrick's I didn't Day. actually realize that it was Cheers. until... Did you? We made it through another week. Yeah, um, I don't know if you can see. We are in the St. Patrick's Day spirit. Because of the wreath that PJ made above our um, stove. Yeah, so welcome, guys. <laughs> um, so this week was spring break for our kids. So they were home all week, which was oh. exciting. And it was. Um, yeah, they kept us on our feet all week. That kept us very busy. Um, we, so we did like a week at Disney two weeks ago and then they went to school for like four days and then they were on spring break for a week. So we've had them in the last like three weeks, we've had them two of those three weeks. So I think they're ready to go back to school. We are ready for them to go back to school. And um, hey Keith, happy uh, St. Patrick's day. Uh, but yeah, we're excited. They go to school tomorrow and then it is back to business for us. Yeah, this week was kind of slower for us on socials because the kids were home. Now that like now that we are on such a rhythm where we get so much like work done while they're at school, anytime they're not at school. Thank you, Kyle, for the heart over on TikTok. Thank you. Um, it really like kind of knocked us <laughs> off our game. So we we took it slow this week on socials because they were out of school. Yeah. Um, yesterday we went to Atlanta to visit some family. We went down there for the day. That was fun. We took the kids and got to visit mm -hmm. with my cousin, which was nice. And what else? Anything? We, uh, we sold some of the sheep at our farm. If you followed us for a while, you know that we have a farm. We've got all kinds of animals. And we just came out of a lambing season where we had like 30 new lambs and it was time to rehome some of those sheep. So yeah. we rehomed see if I 17 sheep. Um, which was much needed. We the first second time we've done that, right? Yeah. We still have 55 sheep. So we still have a lot of sheep. Uh-huh. <clears throat> but that's kind of the plan since we don't plan on um they're more of like a hobby pet type thing for us. So we um downsize every once in a while. Yeah. Sopna said Dixie was having a blast when the land yeah. So Dixie, I posted on our Instagram stories today, was flying around the farm with her little car, and she has trained the three lambs that she bottle fed to follow her around in the car uh, and it's hilarious. Dixie is so funny. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> How did we get so many? Well, we started with, um, we knew that we wanted, a bit, like we have enough land to support like a hundred sheep. We don't want a hundred sheep, but I knew that I wanted somewhere around 50. The main reason why I want the sheep is to keep our pasture grazed so that I don't have to bush hog it so much every summer. And they really do their job. 
I do end up having to bush hog once a year or sometimes twice a year, but it's nice not having to do it because it takes me about 14 hours to bush hog our pasture, yeah. which is like a week. <laughs> yeah, I break it up and do it in multiple days. But um, yeah, so that's why we have them. And that's why we have so many. And we actually, we really enjoy them. So um, favorite TV show, Friends or The Office? It would definitely be Friends for me. I grew up watching Friends. What about you? You didn't really watch either of those. I didn't watch either of them. I think I've seen clips of The Office and I think it's funny. Um, I always say about The Office, and I know this is going to rub people the wrong way, but I'm like, every scene is just different people taking turns being like the dummy. Like sometimes Steve Carell's the dummy in one scene, but in the next scene, he's like the superior smart guy. And <clears throat> my brother and sister love that show. I've never gotten into it. Whatever. Um, Nickelback over on TikTok asked if we keep up with the person that we sold the Land Cruiser to. We don't. Um, for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, we had this vintage. Yeah, that was a big thing. That was a big moment for us. So we had this vintage 99 Land Cruiser that I had wanted for years. Mm -hmm. I looked for it for two years before I found the one that we ended up buying. We had to drive like to Atlanta, to, two hours away to get it. And we bought it in 2018 and we loved it. We have been saying that we want to minimize for the last like four years and we don't ever actually do it. Right now, we well, before we sold the Land Cruiser, we had four vehicles, yeah, which is way too many for way too much for two people. Um, so well, why don't you explain what they were like, what they are? Because four does sound excessive, we're not like excessive people. So, before the kids, we had three vehicles, yeah, and um, so I had a truck, Thomas had an SUV, and then mm -hmm. we had the Land Cruiser. Well, when we got the farm, we needed a farm truck. So I bought a old Toyota Tacoma pickup truck, a 2002. Mm -hmm. So that's a farm truck. And then I needed a truck that was reliable, that could take the kids around whenever I need to take them around. So I have a Tundra. Thomas has a Lexus SUV. And then we had the Cruiser that we had bought years ago. Yeah. And that was the one that didn't really serve a purpose. It, it was fun to have and like we enjoyed mm -hmm. having it but we have not like we had not driven it so long that the battery had died and actually went bad and it was only like a two-year-old battery and so it just made <clears throat> sense to sell it plus we were paying like car insurance on four vehicles it doesn't make sense so yeah. sold the land cruiser and my goal this summer is to continue on minimizing I am a hoarder and we have like this warehouse that we have a lot of like building materials in windows and doors and washer and dryers and all kinds of things. So my plan this summer is when we get out to the farm, that's where the storage building mm -hmm. is. I'm going to start like selling, King selling, yes. selling. I'm going to get up and selling. We just have too much shit. Like yeah, way too much. We have so yeah. much stuff. And like, it's so not even like it's good stuff. Like a lot of it well, is just, I mean, it a is, lot of it is like you, we buy it because it's on sale. Yeah. Doesn't mean that we need it. Yeah. I found like this really good deal on 52 windows and I bought them all. Like, why do I need 52 windows? We have used some of those yeah. windows, but it's just like, good a grip. Let's go. Let's sell this stuff. Yeah. Sopna said, PJ, I need windows and doors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sopna, I would hook you up because I've got windows and I've got doors and I've got windows and windows and windows. Um, someone on YouTube, I think Lee said, question, at Disney, it looked like your children made a very good friend. How did that work out? So, yes, they did. Um, Brady, and I think I saw Justin and Mo on Instagram earlier. I don't know if they're still on. If you guys are, hello. Um, but, yeah, they they he, they he made really good friends with um, this little boy named Brady, and he was so sweet. <clears throat> and they hung out the entire week. Whenever we had to go home, they were all crying and so sad that they weren't going to see each other anymore. But yeah, he's a, he's a really sweet kid. Okay, great question over on Instagram. They said Henry Cavill or Ryan Reynolds. Henry I, Cavill. Yeah, I agree. Can I say something controversial again? Ryan Reynolds does not do it for me. I like Ryan Reynolds. I think he's like <clears throat> obviously attractive. Like I'm not disputing. Hey, Jim, over in Orlando. But he doesn't like... I don't know. He doesn't do it for me. Ruru over on TikTok asked if we plan on living at the farm full time. Uh, or, or live off the farm. 
Oh, live off the farm. That's a completely different question that I read you can completely wrong. Answer both. Why don't you answer both? Um, okay, so let's answer the real question. Do you plan to live off the farm? That would be nice. I don't know if we have the time that it would take to live off the farm. We will have chickens, which we already have, and we do... Do We don't have them out. We, we eat the chicken eggs. Mm -hmm. um, and we do want to do a garden. I just don't think that we would... I would say we'll live off the farm probably five to 10%. As we get older and have more time to like do stuff, I could see us wanting to live off the farm, but um, we just don't have the time that it would take to do that. That would be like the ultimate goal though. That'd be the ultimate dream. Yeah. Um, and then the other question that I made up in my head that I thought you asked was, are we going to live at the farm full time? And that is still up in the air. Not sure about that. And then somebody also, uh, Nickelback, Asks, what do you think about Kate Middleton? That's a great. Um, what what have I been saying all week? Where is she? I've been saying I really like my royal family love is mostly reserved for Diana. And I'm so fascinated with her. I've seen all the documentaries, read everything. But and I don't really pay attention to Kate Middleton. However, this like Kate Gate, where is Kate Middleton has consumed me this week. And I have been really invested in it. Um, I don't know why. I'm just like, where is she? The The Photoshop fail was insane. It was horrendous and crazy. And then her, co whoever covering up for it, I'm like, they need a better PR person. The palace needs better PR. If they think this is believable, it's crazy. Hey, from the UK. Okay, read more Luke over on Instagram. <clears throat> Like, what do you think about this? What are people in the UK saying about Kate Middleton? Um, it's wild. Sapna. So my plan is by not staying off of Facebook Marketplace, I'm going to stay on it, but I'm going to sell everything that I have. That's the plan. We'll see if that actually happens. Mm. <clears throat> so someone said, Mark over on YouTube said, with all these properties and et cetera, where do you guys... What do you guys do for a regular job to sustain your lifestyle? Um, so to get where we got, or to get where we are right now, yeah. it took a lot of work in our early 20s. We um, we started, I started early in my early 20s buying and renovating properties and then keeping them. And I was buying like houses that were like $10,000 and $3,000, like dilapidated condemned homes. And by doing that year after year, it got to the point where we were having income coming in from those properties as rentals. And then um, I got into real estate, got my real estate license and that helped. But now we are still involved in real estate and we do social media stuff. So content creation, we do brand partnerships and as of right now, that's where the majority of our money comes from. Mm -hmm. Will over on YouTube said something really sweet. Thank you, Will. Um, okay, so Chris and Kyle said, question for PJ. Do you have any favorite YouTube channels for renovating or house repairs? Um, <clears throat> so I do have one that I go back to over and over again. And it's what is it used okay so it used to be abandoned mansion and then he bought a resort i haven't really gotten into the resort as much as i got into mm -hmm. abandoned mansion and there is this person in the uk that posts a lot of like cottages that they that i don't know i don't do a ton but yeah i feel like right now we're into we're really into like I'm really into like design more so than renovating. Like the part that comes after renovating, Homeworthy is a great YouTube channel for like home interiors. They do a lot of. Wait, um, was that the one that we watched recently? Mm -hmm. Okay, with, with yeah, the girls' house in California. I love that one. Yeah, Homeworthy is a great one if you want to take tours of people's homes, like interior designers' homes. It's they're great. Derek said, "Is that my usual wedding band? It looks sparkly. It is my usual wedding band." Blake said, "What is your favorite property?" By far, my favorite property that we own would be the farm. Um, mm -hmm. It has like, so it has like open pasture, but the pasture is below this like beautiful mountain range. And 
po like when we post videos and pictures of it on social media, it doesn't do it justice. Mm -hmm. Like when you step out into the field and you just like look up and there's just like mountains all the way around you. Mm -hmm. it, it's so stunning and so peaceful. It is stunning. Even today I was like looking at it and I was like, I've been looking at this mountain for the past five years or almost six now. And I'm like, I'm still, it's still like takes my breath away. Yeah. Ooh, this is a good question. Nickel back said, how has social media changed your guys' life? I would probably say it's changed our life in like every way. <clears throat> I mean, it's become our job. Never would have thought that was a thing when we started. So it's become our, our career. We have met our best friends off social media. We have been able to travel to different places. We have like met online so many different people and we've learned so much. It's really opened our eyes. We're from a very small conservative town in Tennessee. And I mean, we've always been very liberal in our views, especially compared to people here, but it's really opened our eyes to there's such a bigger world out there than just our little town. What do you think? I would agree. There's a million pros to it and there's a million cons to it though. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Very true. Um, Tony said the farm is almost a mental health getaway. It yeah. really is, Tony. There's another Dan over on Instagram. Did social media turning into your job make it lose some of its luster? Yeah. Short answer, yes, but it's more complicated than that. What do you think? Um, I don't, So I would compare it to like whenever you were in school or like for me, like when I was in college and I wanted to watch TV and I was like, oh, but I really need to read that chapter that I was supposed to read. It turned it into like that. Like if anytime I'm doing something that I enjoy doing, it's like, oh, well, I should be making content or doing this or doing that. I don't know. It, it's always like on the back burner because it is such a big part of our life mm -hmm. that it's, I, I feel that constant pressure of like mm -hmm. having to stay up to date with it. And I'm also like the type of person where when I'm working on a project, I'll sit my phone down and I won't look at it for hours, mm -hmm. but you can't do that when you're supposed to be making content for social media. So mm -hmm. It's hard for me when it comes to that aspect of it, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. There's, there's an aspect of it to where it's like, um, you always want to be ready and like have your phone ready to film something because everything could be content. Um, <clears throat> especially since we share so much of our lives online, but I don't know. I still do get excited whenever I know that we've created something that's like fun and educational and that we feel proud of. And I click post and I, I do feel excited. Yeah. Like even, even like what we're doing with our newsletter, we have a newsletter on Substack called OK McKay. And every Tuesday, whenever I press post and we've been working on it for the whole weekend and I'm like, I get a nervous jittery feeling. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm about to press post. I hope every word is spelled correctly. I hope it looks okay. I hope everything's where it's supposed to be. So also finding new ways to kind of reinvent yourself or post something new that your audience hasn't seen. And that's kind of what the newsletter is for us. Um, J.R. Sanchez over on YouTube said, has the type of sponsorship con <laughs> or has this type of sponsorship changed since you guys have pivoted to more family content? And I would say yes. When we started posting more about the kids, we got more family related or kid related content. And I feel like we kind of took a step back once we realized what was happening because like we love our kids, but our kids, we also want to protect our kids. <clears throat> and so there was a period where I felt like we were posting about our kids because we were just excited about like the fact that we had adopted the kids and they were a big part of our life. But then it got to the point where we were kind of like, well, actually, they're not really old enough at this point to to be like, yeah, I want to be a part. They all are. They're like always like they would want their own YouTube channel if we let them. But we are, are not going to do that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But now I have this like sense of like wanting to protect them and make sure that they're OK with everything that we post and like whatever they're involved in. And so I feel like we kind of took a step back from posting so much about them. Mm -hmm. But yeah. 
it definitely changed when we became parents for sure. Yeah, I agree. Hmm. Jeffrey over on TikTok said, how are you both doing? Um, good. Doing I, great. Yeah, I will say like, um, whenever I travel, like my, my happy place is being at home or being at the farm. And so when I travel, it kind of like, um, depletes my battery. And so when we got back from our trip, I was kind of like, just like at a zero mm -hmm. as far as like energy wise. And I'm, I feel I'm feeling charged again. Like we've spent a lot of time at the farm this week and we've spent a lot of time at home on the couch and that's exactly what I needed. And I feel good now. <clears throat> I think that's so important. I mean, cause we, our trip was the trip of a lifetime. It was mm -hmm. so much fun for those of you who don't know what we're talking about. We spent four days last week, or uh, I guess it's been two weeks now, four weeks, four days in Walt Disney World. Disney brought us on as part of their um, 2024 creator celebration. So we spent four days at Walt Disney World going to every single park, going to different events that Disney was putting on, different dinners and dessert parties. And then right after Walt Disney World, we hopped on a bus and drove on over to the Disney Cruise where we spent three days on the Disney mm -hmm. Wish. So it was like nonstop, go, 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 amazing. It was so much fun. But then now it's like, okay, we, we're going to rest. Yeah. And I feel good. I feel like we have so many things that we need to like get completely checked off the to-do list for holiday house. Yeah. And I'm ready to get them done. Cause I'm ready for it to be finished so that we can enjoy it this summer. That's what we want to do. Yeah. The kids spring break was this week and every like their friends or you know the friends parents are like so are you guys doing anything for spring break and oh. we were like not at all we are staying home for spring break the kids spring break was last week in disney yeah we are thinking about going to the beach shack in two weeks for thomas's birthday i don't yeah. know if that's gonna happen i'm like checked out of the beach shacks but we'll yeah. see what happens. It would be nice to go one more time before we, we have them currently listed for sale. It would be nice to like visit one more time, but I don't know. We'll, see well I would be okay with not going there. I, I kind of just want to go somewhere because we kind of made a deal like two or three years ago where we weren't going to get each other presents for Christmas, but we were going to take trips for our birthdays to make them a little more special. So if we didn't go to the beach, I'd be okay going somewhere else. Well, if we don't, if we don't go to the beach, I just want to stay home. <laughs> What? Yes. That's not a trip for my <clears throat> birthday then. And I'm not like, we need to celebrate my birthday. I'm just like, that's an excuse to go somewhere and get out of town because it's a long weekend. It's Easter. My birthday's on Easter weekend. So the kids are out of school that Friday and that Monday. So it's a four day weekend. Yeah. We can't pass that up. We could always stay. We have a tiny house on our farm that we could stay at. <sighs> Be so. It is way too tiny. The tiny and tiny house is tinying. Guys, what should we do with the tiny house? Should we turn it into a rental so y'all could come and stay? That was the original plan. That's why we got it. I don't know. The thing about it is if it was a rental, we have farm animals right behind it. So you would be, you would hear them all day and all night. Yeah. Thomas needs his space, Edwin said. <laughs> Clinton said Thomas is dropping heavy hints here. PJ Derek said tiny house is not relaxing for Thomas. Yeah, it's it's not relaxing for me with our three kids and our two dogs and our cat. But other than that, <clears throat> yeah, it's just too tiny. I wish we'd known that before we had bought it because that would have saved us a lot of money. And that thing has just been sitting there for almost two years now. We're well, it's been sitting there for three and a half years. <laughs> That was a waste of money. Let me just tell you guys, if you're thinking about tiny house living, don't do it. It's not worth it. It's a waste of money. You're not going to like it. I just, I'm it's, like, it's like such a cute idea. If is. you think about it, especially like in the time when we bought it, we were like, minimize. We're going to have this little rental that we can even use. Not going to happen. It's just little. Too well, much. it's great for like a two night stay. Yep. Like it really is with like you and your honey or whoever. But like, as far as a like tiny house living, I'm like, what is the appeal? Truly what's the appeal? 
I could do like four times the size of whatever that is. It's it's like 300 square feet. So that's what I need. Oh, gosh. And yeah. Minimal. Um, hello, Erpung over on YouTube. They said they loved the video of Disney. Um, Norman Allen said, do your children ever ask you guys to slow down? It seems like every week you have full schedules. <laughs> you know, they... Wait, where was they that? Don't they don't ever ask us to slow down? No. If if it was up to the children, it would be more, more, more. Yeah. They they have so much more capacity and energy than we do, mm -hmm. and we're constantly being like, no, we're gonna just stay home today. Yep. Yeah, our children have a ton of energy at all times. They would stay up all night if we let them. We actually so last year we did sports. We did like basketball and soccer and gymnastics. And so this year, and we're at the end of this year, we were like, we're not doing any extracurricular activities other than just schoolwork. Mm -hmm. And at home, we're going to do schoolwork. And the kids are dying to, they, Anna wants to do basketball. Alan wants to do basketball and Ryan wants to do soccer. Anna also wants to do cheerleading. Alan also wants to do dance. So next year is going to be even worse. Yeah. Oh, Oh, it did it again. Sorry, Instagram. Sorry, Instagram. My alarm went off. Uh, hello from Raider and Brent in Virginia over on Instagram. Um, yeah, Derek said, where would you like to go for your birthday weekend, Thomas? I'm surprised that you actually want to go to the beach house because you never want to go. It's I don't want to go me. in the fall. Like you wanted to go for fall break and I was like, no, I'm in fall fall mode and then once we got down there you realized that you were in fall mode too so we left we were at the beach house for a day and a half well last it, fall. it also rained i don't do beach and rain if i if i'm not paying like <laughs> technically if we had paid for a condo that'd been different but i'm not gonna stay down in this tiny little beach shack with rain and sandy feet and three kids i will say the beach shack is very tiny it's like a little bigger than the tiny house. Let's see. The beach house is about 700 square feet. It's a tiny little shack that we fixed up. Yeah. It's really small. And so we really have to be in the mood to go down there. And it has to be like great weather. And I don't know. I mean, I could go knowing the thing is also in the summertime when we went, we weren't sure how long we were going to be down there. So it was like an, an indefinite amount of time to be in the small space. But if we know that we're going to be there three days, that's doable. The The funny thing about this summer was that it was a very nice trip and it was enjoyable and it went by quickly. Yeah, it was nice. And then I had an accident and we couldn't get out there, get out of there quick enough. And we, I have not wanted to go back since then. Yeah, because you had a horrible accident last summer with a thumb and it jaded us. It did. It, the beach shack has kind of put us in a predicament though, because we we have a lot of money invested into it. And obviously we're not gonna sell it if we're gonna lose money. And so one of them I know for sure we'll be able to sell this summer and get our money back out of it. But one of them, I'm not sure if we'll be able to. And it's the one that we fixed up. So what we may end up doing with we may sell one and then keep one mm -hmm. and rent it out like a long term rental, not do a I wouldn't want to do a short term. I'd want to do like a six month or a one year lease. Somebody asked where the shirt is from. Eddie Bauer, I think. I don't think so. Is it? I think it's. Uh... You have it on back. Oh, Viore? Oh, yeah. Viore. Viore. That sounds like a perfume. Dior. That's where it's from, Ryan. Um. Yeah. Can you Airbnb the beach shack? So we could. We'd make a lot more money if we did Airbnb, but we, I just don't want to mess with the upkeep of an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And so if we were to rent it, we'd just do like a long term, we'd either do like a six month or a one year lease. Yes. Yeah, that's what we would do. My mom, and this is another thing, my mom tonight, we went to her house for dinner and she was like, can I go to the beach house? And I don't know how serious she was, but I'm like, if she wants to go, I don't know where she'd sleep. It'd be so tight. Yeah. It'd be fun. Well, she said, I want to go to the beach. I don't know if she knew that we were staying at the beach shack. 
Well, where else would we stay? Surely she knows that. I told her she'd have to drive separately. And like maybe the kids could ride with her or like one of the kids and we could take turns. That'd be cute. Mm -hmm. But she could sleep on the, well, on the we couch. Could, we could do Anna and her in one bedroom and the boys on the couch because it's a big couch. Mm -hmm. And they, she, they have their own bathroom. So yeah, we could make it work. Um, so TBD. Yeah, I don't really ever want to go to the beach house. I'm not a beach person. That's a thing. That's a thing. I will happily go to the beach. I think that's so much fun. Is it my first choice for a vacation? No. My first choice would be to New England or to New York City. Colby is a Florida realtor and he said, have you ever thought about owner finance? That's a great idea. I actually, What's have, that? It'd be where we, we were, we would act as the bank, but usually with owner finance, you're like $10,000 down and then you pay a monthly that's a great idea. Thank you. I might do that. I would consider that. Thanks, Colby. Um, Glenn said PJ's on the couch. Mama Lila gets the bed. <laughs> well, she. So we have one of the rooms is a queen bed and one is two twins. So it'd be the twin room. She'd get a twin bed and Anna would get a twin bed. <laughs> Paul Rogers over on TikTok said you would love Nantucket. I've always wanted to go to Nantucket. Are you guys over 30? You tell us. I'm almost I'm almost over 40, honey. Almost only counts in horseshoes, hand grenades, and nuclear warfare. So I don't want to hear the word almost. So I, I'm 37 and Thomas is 32. <clears throat> Junior Sanchez said, Thomas, how did you build your relationship with Anna? It seems like you guys have a special bond. You know what? I don't think I would say that we have... Um, a more special bond than like you and PJ and Anna do. I don't think that either, like either of us have a, a special or a word. I don't think it's a word, a more special bond with um, either of our kids. So like they're all about the same. Hunter asked where the beach shack was. It is in West Panama city beach. It technically is in a part of Florida that used to be called sunny side, but it was absorbed by Panama city beach um, later on, Sunnyside was established in like the 1940s. And as Panama City grew, it started absorbing all the small little beach towns. Mm -hmm. But it's like 30 minutes or I mean, sorry, 10 minutes from a 30A Rosemary Beach. And then it's 10 minutes from Pier Park, if you're familiar with the area. It's a great location. It really is. It's a and dream. It, it has a private dedicated beach, which is nice. Um, uh, 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 Billy over on YouTube said, go somewhere that you haven't been. That would be New England. Neither of us have ever been to New England. Um, I noticed remark, Jimmy B said, I noticed remarkably, I noticed remarkably equitable bonds between and among the five of you. Yeah. So he's like a really well-written person, but yes, I agree. Um, Derek said, specialer, a word, depends <laughs> on the amount of wine you have. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Uh, Derek said, can you drive to New England comfortably in a weekend? No, mm. it would it would no. take like three days or two or three days. I well, think, no, to drive. it would. Yeah, it wouldn't take. What is it like? It's four, probably 20 hours. hours. Well, no, it takes like 15 hours to drive to upstate New York and isn't. Yeah, we would New have England. to fly. Yeah. Somebody said you should go somewhere that you haven't been, I which is, that. oh, you did. Okay. That was part of the reason why we decided to sell the beach. Shacks. Yes. Explain that. Um, when we were originally the, the idea, I think the idea of owning a cute little cottage by the beach is it's like the American dream. Like, oh, uh, we'll just go to the beach shack. We'll yeah. go to the beach cottage. But realistically, if you think about it, part of, traveling is being able to see places that you haven't been and getting inspired by different places that you visit. And I think after we realized after last summer and going to the beach shack over and over again to renovate it, it quickly was realized that we don't want to just have to keep going back to the same place mm -hmm. every single mm -hmm. time that we want to travel somewhere. And I think that was part of the reason it is nice. It would be a nice little family retreat mm -hmm. to do that. But ultimately I think we like to experience new places 
and we'd rather just rent somewhere like pick a pick a place on the map and be like that's where we're gonna go yeah and and i you know what i definitely think it took buying and renovating and staying in that place to realize that Mm -hmm. because we were staying in airbnbs the whole time we were renovating the beach shack and then whenever it was time like we got to stay in it we were so excited but then we were like oh wait something about like going to a hotel or going to an airbnb oh gosh our cat is coming he's going to jump up on our laps something about going to a hotel and staying in there or staying in an airbnb and then just like throwing your crap and then leaving was so nice and then all of a sudden we were staying in our beach shack which was hi grace on instagram oh hi grace which was so nice oh he's gonna jump up but it was like a lot of work to pack up everything shut down everything Derek, here's Alistair. Derek asked where Alistair was earlier. Here he is. I'm gonna have to put him up because he likes to. Walter, that's a good question. I'm gonna come back to it. Okay. Well, I'll answer it now. Yeah. Um, Walter said, does renovating properties make you fall more in love with the property or sick of it? That's a great question. Right now, I feel like you can experience either side of that. Right now, I am feeling very fatigued from renovating anything and everything. We have had a renovation going on since 2008. For for me, (laughs) I've had a renovation going on since 2008. Um, Last year, I was renovating the farmhouse, the beach house, a house that we bought that we were going to do a short-term rental on. Getaway House was the name of it. Um, And what else? Mom's house was finished. So three houses last year, way too much for me. I can't do that. And we finally, we're down to one house that we're renovating. And as soon as that's finished, I've been prepping Thomas. I'm like, I don't want to touch tile. I don't want to pick out tile. I don't want to think about paint colors. I don't want to pick out curtains or hardware. I need a break. I need like a good, I need a year off from renovating something. And then I think I will get inspired again and I'm going to want to do it again because I love a project, but we've had too, too many projects going on and I need, yeah. I need a break. Yeah, we have. And there's, I mean, there's something about taking, setting back and taking time away that really does makes absence makes the heart grow fonder. Spence over on TikTok said people don't realize that renovations take years depending on the project. Yeah. It's so true. HGTV uh, makes it seem otherwise. Um, so yeah, how do you guys, Junior Sanchez said, how do you guys deal with burnout? Not very well. (laughs) I mean, we definitely experience it. I think just acknowledging that you experience it is like a very big step and it's a good thing to do. Just admitting to yourself and to your spouse or whoever, like, Hey, I'm feeling burned out. I'm going to call it what it is. Like just giving it a name, it holds power. And so saying that you're burnt out is, is I think the first step and then taking small actions, like they don't even have to be big, but like whenever you feel burnt out, you're like, okay, I'm going to take a day where I like lay on the couch and don't do anything. And that like replenishes you. I have a few approaches. So I have the bury my head and disappear approach, which is like, I go to the couch and I just disappear for however long I need to. Um, if I'm feeling more productive, Another way that I deal with burnout is I'm like, okay, I'm feeling very overwhelmed and very stressed from this. I'm going to write down on a sheet of paper, everything that is stressing me out. Usually it has to do with the renovation. So just like last week when we got back from Disney, I was feeling very overwhelmed and very stressed. And we came up with, I was listing a punch list and Thomas was writing it down as I did it. So it's like, call the gas person to do the gas lines pick out the countertops, pick out the hardware, call the cabinet guy so that they can cut two inches off of the cabinet. Um, And I came up with a punch list. Just doing the punch list, I felt so much better. And then having the punch list, that next week of having that punch list, I was able to just go line by line and check them off. And Mm -hmm. we knocked off probably five different things. One of them was pick up a water heater. We did that last week. One was pick out the hardware. We did that last week. Um, pick up toilets, two different, we had to get two toilets. That was on the to-do list. We did that. So making a to-do list is so helpful because it, yeah. for me, it's a visual. I'm a very visual person. I saw everything that needed to be done. And then we 
started tackling it. Yeah. And the guy, yeah, I mean, even just writing it down. Somebody said guy in the white looks Portuguese. He is Lebanese, half Lebanese. Lebanese yeah. Cecil, hi over to Cecil over on Instagram. Um, <clears throat> hi from Ireland. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Um, Blake, you will for sure find your person. Just put it out there into the universe. Someone asked if there's a way to contact us off of this. And if you guys ever want to send us an email, it's on our uh, blog, pjandthomas.com. You can find um, our email, where to submit it there under about slash contact. Again, pjandthomas.com. Um, yeah, thanks, Will. Will talked about our newsletter. So the issue, um, this recent issue in our newsletter it makes it sound like there's a problem. Our most recent newsletter was about our kids getting picked on and how um, a certain adult stepped in and made it better. And if you want to read it, you can go to pjandthomas.substack.com. It was really sweet. And actually, Sarah, um, the, the cast member from the Disney Wish, reached out to us on Instagram. She found us and she was like, hey, guys, I'm Sarah. I'm the one that helped your kids. And it was really, really sweet getting to talk to her again. And um that is a plus of social media or pro. We talked about pros and cons earlier. That's a pro. Connecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was wonderful. Um, loved. Hi, Lori, over on YouTube. Loved your post about your Land Cruiser. Hope there's another one for you in your future. Okay. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so we sold our Land Cruiser this week. We talked about it earlier. But for those of you who are just now joining, I don't think that's the last Land Cruiser that we'll ever own. So we made a mistake we at one time had a 2020 land cruiser and we loved it um and we decided to sell it and at the time we needed to i think but then we turned around and then bought thomas's he has a lexus <laughs> oh my god baby what are you doing hi sweetie guys are one of our kids is you're hot okay i'll turn Okay. okay, sorry, baby. We'll turn the air down. Oh my god, you guys, poor baby. Um, one of our kids. They've been in bed for forty-five minutes. Our kids normally fall asleep like that. I look over, and he's standing in the dining room, just staring at us. And he said that they were hot upstairs. So PJ's turning the air down upstairs. I will like, that's one thing. Our kids are very much like us in that regard. Like we keep the air on like 67 when we go to bed at night because we get hot, we run hot and the kids run hot too. Did you put it on 67? I, they like it on like 67, 68. It's on 68. Okay. Um, yeah. So poor babe. What? <laughs> <laughs> I just read a comment over on TikTok, not answering it. I'll read it though. It, <laughs> the The question was, what's your opinion on us keeping eye contact while you're unloading? Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, so Christian said, I was very emotional when you announced you were selling the Land Cruiser. Uh, we were too Christian. Oh, that's what we were talking about, the Land Cruiser. Hmm. We had a 2020... I don't think that we. this is the last time we'll have a Land Cruiser or the Lexus version of a Land Cruiser, the I'm, LX. I'm not doing any more Lexus. Um, typical sleepwear. I like boxer briefs. Thomas also boxer briefs. Why wouldn't you do another Lexus? Because Toyota holds value more. That's important for me. I was reading like a comparison. <clears throat> so like the what, Land... What, hold on real quick. What's the other platforms you're on? We're on... Uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Substack, Substack, blog, X. Um, I was doing a lot of comparisons between the Land Cruiser and the LX, and they're the same truck, basically, excuse me, or large SUV. Um, but yeah, I did read where the Land Cruisers hold their value better. Someone said, do you like Range Rovers? Okay, so I like the idea of Range Rovers. Sorry, that was loud. I like the idea of uh, Range Rovers, and I love the look of Range Rovers. They're like the prettiest SUVs, but they're crap. 
They yeah. don't last. They break down. I've read so many forums about them. Are some of our friends have them? They just they like they're not well made cars, and it's sad because they're so pretty. Yeah, I love Toyota. Mm -hmm. It's just like tire rotation and oil change, and you are good to go. Mm -hmm. Unless you got a lemon, which does happen sometimes. But I've never had any issues with any of the Toyotas mm -mm. that I've had. Yeah, we've had over the years, we've had a Corolla, a Scion, which is Toyota, uh, a Tacoma, a Tacoma, Tacoma, a Tacoma, Tacoma, a Tacoma, 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 Tundra, Land Cruiser, Land Cruiser. That's 10 different. And then my Lexus, my other Lexus that I had. Is if, that it? That's if, 12. If only Toyota would ever want to partner with us. They don't. <laughs> I know. I would love to partner with Toyota. Uh, Sarah said, I have a Camry and I've had zero issues. Exactly. Yeah. It's just like, if as long as you maintain the oil, do your oil change yeah. and do your tire rotation, mm -hmm. you're not paying. And windshield wipers. Those three things. So Thomas over on YouTube said, what do you have for vehicles currently? So... We're a Toyota family. family. So I drive a Lexus, you drive a Toyota Tundra, and then he also has a farm truck. It's a Tacoma. It's a Toyota Tacoma. I have an O2 Tacoma and I have a 2023 three Tundra. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy said my Toyota has 360,000 miles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wild. And then someone on Instagram said, I have a Tundra with 300,000 miles, runs like a dream. Yes. Like our old Land Cruiser had over 200,000 miles, which is actually really low for a 99. And it ran great. Um, Glenn mentioned that I rolled my Toyota Tacoma. So this past June, I was in a car accident where I got T-boned and my, I was in a 2016 Toyota Tacoma and it rolled like four or five times. The inside of my truck looked completely normal. Like everything looked great. And then the outside was destroyed, but they're just built and they're, they protect you. They're mm -hmm. built well. They protect you. I know the cabin is what really kept PJ like alive basically and safe. And I feel like if you had been in another car, you may not have been so safe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The Tacoma really, we're so grateful for that, for that car. Cause that was a horrible, horrible accident. Another, another accident that PJ had, PJ had two bad accidents last summer, one regarding his thumb, one regarding a car accident. It was really rough. Someone said the new, the new Land Cruisers are great. And yes, I agree. I love them. They're they, just not very big. Yeah. They're too small. They don't have a third row. We need a third row for, um, for our family. And yeah, so I do love them though. Exhausted from your Disney travels. I would say yes when we got home, but we are back to normal now. And it was like a yeah. good a good feeling. Yeah. A good exhaustion. It was. Um, we will always say yes to Disney. We've 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 worked with Disney for the past five years and we love them. They are so wonderful and easy to work with. Um, we love what they stand for and what they represent. So we'll always say yes to them if anytime they want to, they want to partner. Um, I am 37 and Thomas is 32. Selling your, I just <laughs> went away. Gabe said, I feel so butch listening to you guys talk about cars. I will <laughs> say I'm the least butch person ever. Um, but he loves, I, I'll, I'll look over and I'll be like, what are you doing? And he's researching or watching a YouTube video about, a land cruiser or a high a, a highlander or a or like even cars that we'll never get like a hyundai the new hyundai santa fe is like i for the last i don't know like for the last like five or six years i really got into cars and i know i can tell you the make and model of a car by looking at its tail lights or headlights like i'm very into them for some reason i don't know why i don't know the <clears throat> nitty-gritty like engines and all that kind of stuff but i know makes and models very very well Keith Payne said, be happy that you visited Disney when you did. It's spring break now and the parks are crowded. I actually researched that before we went. And I think we were there a week before the busiest week Disney has. And it's due mm -hmm. to spring break. Um, someone said, 
Elizabeth said, I love that PJ always has something in his hands. Yeah, that's AD ADHD. This. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. Hi, Keith. Excuse me. Hi, Keith over on YouTube. Thank you. Um, can you guys hear Alistair? We locked him in the laundry room and he will not stop me going. Somebody said, what food are you making? So, um, Thomas dethawed chicken before he found out that. Mm -mm. Can't use that word. Unthawed. No. What is it? It's just thawed. Oh. And you know how I know that? No. Because I did that same thing. I said dethawed like five years ago and we, on stories and like. So many people were like, that's not, D-Thought is, <laughs> like, they <laughs> roasted me. And it's one of those, like, sh boat and ship, how we never make that mistake anymore. Oh, okay. It has burned my memory. Anyways, keep going. Okay, so <laughs> Thomas D-Thought the chicken. <laughs> and it it was before we found out that his mom invited us to dinner. Okay. And so we had to cook it. And so we cooked the chicken. Yeah. Kitty cat says, let me. I know. He's like, let me jump on your thighs and scratch you. Um, <clears throat> D thought is frozen, says King, King Glizzer over on YouTube. Yeah. So over the years, this is one of those things that I talked about earlier where I said uh, social media is great because we've learned so much. That is one of those things. Um, I posted uh, a, another thing with my mom. I was like, my mom made some soup and it was frozen. So she brought it over and I'm de-thawing it. And you guys, not you guys, but people roasted me in DMs on Instagram and was like, and they were like, that, does, that just doesn't make sense. So now I am very conscious of it. Tony said, I think we're all guilty over the years of saying unthawed. I know I am. But what about de-thawed? I yeah I say I used to say D thought I wouldn't say unthought D thought hugs from Brazil hello Terry uh, Sylvia said are your kids adopted or biological our kids are adopted they are it was all a, biological siblings though. yeah sibling group mm -hmm. how did you guys meet I need to know so Jonathan there's a whole YouTube video. Uh, I think about it. There is how we met. Yeah. That's what it's called. How we met. And yeah. the short answer is it was at a mutual friends get together. Yeah. Back in 2009. I would love to visit Ireland. I oh think one day we yeah. will. Yeah. I want to take the kids to New York city. Cause they've heard so much about it and they love welcome to New York by Taylor Swift. And then I want to take the kids to Europe. Brian, we have never been to the festival, but I have heard about it. Hello, Brad from Dayton, Tennessee. Have you ever been to California? We have a few times. Yeah. Did you, someone over on Instagram said, did you guys make time for yourself on the Disney cruise? We did. We did. We actually, and there was probably two or three different days where we did this. The kids fell in love with the kids club on the ship. It's called the Oceaneers Club. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to go there 24 seven. So two, two or three days we took them there. And then we went back to the room in the middle of the day and napped. We actually did nap. We did but. actually nap. Yes. <clears throat> Derek said, yeah, Thomas really dropped the baby weight fast. <laughs> I know I'm always like not bad for Four years, right? I look okay. Hey from Norway. Hey from South Carolina. Oh my God. Hmm. We just received a really hateful comment. On what? On YouTube. Where? Glenn said, Thomas is going to hate me, but I don't like Taylor Swift anymore. <laughs> oh, I wonder if it's because of this that message we also got. Wait, what is it? Glenn, what? What what's your reason? Wait, what message did we get? You are the one that responded to it on Instagram. Oh, 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 maybe, maybe, maybe we'll see. Um, I love Taylor Swift. 
I really love Taylor Swift. Um, okay, so guys, we are we have two minutes. Two minutes. Hey from Asheville. But guys, we made it two weeks in a row. That's good because we had taken a break and that break turned into a long break. It did. But we do plan on continuing our Vino and Vince now that we're back on track. Every Sunday at seven o'clock. Yep. We go live or sorry, eight, eight o'clock. We go live from eight to nine every Sunday. So Okay, real quick, we have one minute. We need to talk about Casey's new album. Someone brought it up over on YouTube. So Casey Musgraves just came out with her new album, Deeper Well. Let's do let's okay. We're we're gonna we try to end them with what we're watching. So let's do yeah. albums we're listening to and what we're watching. This will also be on our newsletter on Tuesday, pjandthomas.com, pjandthomas.substack.com. Subscribe to it and you'll see it. All right. We're watching this show called Constellation on Apple TV Plus. It is so good. Numi Rapace. I don't think I'm pronouncing her last name right, but she's amazing. If you have Apple TV Plus, do not sleep on Apple TV Plus, you guys. I'm telling you right now. Edwin, they, we're happy you're back too. Yes, Edwin, we are. We have they have so many great shows. Constellation on Apple TV Plus. You heard it here first. And then what are we listening to? So Casey Musgraves. For me, this is a new artist because I didn't really get into her past work. Uh, I started listening to her last album a few months ago and a little bit when it came out the, f the first time. Uh, I played it whenever it first yeah. came out. So I think you heard it then. So I'm really into Casey right now. Ariana Grande. I love the album. My only negative about it is that not enough songs. It's only 36 minutes long. So when I go to the gym, that's, crazy. that's when I listen to music. Hi, I, Tanya. I have to kitchens. And oh, bars. hi. I have to listen to her album twice. <laughs> or, or almost twice whenever I um, do it. Yeah. What else? Well, someone said that Heaven is the best song on Deeper Well. That's a good, or This is Heaven or whatever. My favorite, let's talk about my favorite song is The Architect. I like I that one. I think the lyrics in that song are beautiful. I think the melody is beautiful. What is your favorite song? Hey, Mom. So <gasps> oh, I'm, I'm Mama. Oh, she was saying Montana Dane. That's a good plug. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me do that real quick. Mm -hmm. For those of you yes. that can stream your music, my little sister Montana Dane has released her first yes. debut single. Um, Something I Need. And it's called Something I Need. It is a very catchy song. It is so good. You should go listen to it. She has a new song coming out soon. Mom, when is her new song coming? Let me know. I'll let them know. But the I'm kids, like it in my head right the now. kids know Montana's song by heart and can sing it word for word. I mean, you can say, "You want to try it, Alexa? Play something I need by Montana Dane." Something I need by Montana Dane from Apple Music. Alexa, volume eight. <laughs> Guys, listen. This is PJ's little sister. It's so good. Listen. So for those asking, it's Montana Dane. You can listen to it on Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you get your songs. This is her debut single called Something I Need. It's so good. Okay, this is the best part. I'm tired of feeling so alone. So just go on, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> I try to talk to you, I'll just shut that trap. I'm running your mouth, I can't 
Our kids know every word to the song. It's like, yes, girl, tell him, drag him, poor <laughs> Phil. This is not something that you need at all. Oh, and she wrote the song herself, which is even yes. better. Okay, so it's my little sister. Her name is Montana Dane, and the song is called Something I Need. And it's on Apple Music, it's on Spotify. Oh, so good, Alexa, ah. Dallas said, why do you have a sister who sings like this and you never listen to Casey? Uh, <laughs> so question. I did listen to Casey a little bit, but. So, okay, that. My sister is also 17. She is a baby, 20 years younger. She's so wonderful though. So again, for the last time, that song is called Something I Need. Just so you know, I found a routine that plays music to help you sleep. Do you want to try it? No, thank you. No, thank you. No Stop. Problem. Stop. <laughs> okay. Um, Montana Dane is the singer. And the song is called Something I Need. You can listen to it on all streaming platforms. Please give it a listen. It's PJ's Little Sister. Share it. Post about it. It's so good. It's so catchy. You'll listen to it once. It'll be in your head all day. Um, somebody said, any, any queer book movie wrecks? I love that one art book that we have. Where is it at? Book movie Rex. Oh, this doesn't necessarily what they're asking, but it's a great like coffee table book. Loving? Yeah. Um, the one that Mariah got me. A photographic history of men in love? Yeah. Yeah, loving. Where is it? On the bookshelf to the right of the fireplace. That's a good one. It's a it's a photo book. So it's like um Sorry, I had to do something for TikTok. Um, it's a photo book. So it's a, basically a photographic history of men in love from 1850 to 1950 to show basically that men have always been, gay people have always been around. I'm pretty sure. I thought that it was. Um, another one is obviously Red, White, and Royal Blue. We love Heartstopper on Netflix. Um... The Royals, we've heard some good things about. We haven't seen that, but that's a good show. Um, okay. All right, I have to pee, so let's say, we have to say goodbye. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much for joining tonight's Vino yes. event. You'll see us on social media all week, but yep. we'll be back next Sunday from 8 yes. to 9 if you want to join us for Vino Invent. Put on some comfy clothes and pour you a glass of whatever you want to drink. Thank mm -hmm. you guys for taking time out of your week to spend it with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful week. All right. Bye, guys. Goodbye.